So for today's lesson, we're going to have a look at this sheet on the octagon. So first of all, we'll deal with the mathematical question that deals with calculating the angles. So to get angle A, first of all, an octagon has eight sides. So to get the external setup angle for an octagon, we can take 360 degrees, the number of degrees in a full circle, divided by the number of sides on the polygon, in this case for an octagon is eight, and that equals 45. So the external angle here, A, is 45 degrees. Now, A plus B is a straight angle. So there is 180 degrees in a straight angle. So therefore, angle B is going to be 180 minus what A is. So we've already worked out up here that A is 45. So B equals 180 degrees minus 45, and that gives us 135 degrees. So the internal angle of an octagon is 135 degrees. And then finally, angle C. If we look at this, we have a full circle here. And that circle is divided up into eight equal parts. So C equals, again, the same as A, 360 degrees divided by eight equals 45. So after doing all the calculations, we've worked out that A is 45 degrees, B is 135 degrees, and C is 45 degrees. So just to go back to this question briefly, if I draw in a full circle in this area here, you can see now that the circle is divided up into eight equal components, sectors. So because there are 360 degrees in a full circle, if we take 360 and divide it by eight, that gives us the value of the angle here, which is 45. So that completes that part of the question, working out the angles contained within an octagon. So moving on to the second question, we're asked to construct a regular octagon on the baseline below. So the first thing that we do is we move in our T-square and we make sure that our T-square is horizontal across the drawing board. Then we move in our set square until it picks up the end of the line. And it's important that you use this set square because this is the 45 degree set square. From over here, we have said that the setup angle there, A, is an angle of 45 degrees. So we use this set square, which has a 45 degree angle down here to draw um, our octagon. So move in the set square there to the base, to the end of the line, and then using your pencil, draw a light line against the set square. So with the set square against the T-square, I've drawn a line against the set square there with the pencil. And then I slide over my 45 degree set square along the T-square and to pick up the end of the line on the other side. And then again, I draw a light line against the set square with my pencil so that now I have two lines coming off the end of the edge of the octagon, both lines rising at an angle of 45 degrees. If you don't have a set square, you can you can take your 60, 30 degree set square and if you line that up with the line there on the page, you'll be able to slide your 45 degree set square along the top of that set square there like that. And that will give you exactly the same result as using a T-square. So you do not need a T-square to, to do that as long as you have a set square lined up with these black heavy lines on the page. Now we take the length of that side on our compass. So very, very accurately put the point of the compass at the end of the line and using, using your compass, take the full length of the side of the octagon and then swing an arc onto the lines that we've just drawn and then place our compass here 
and then swing another arc onto that line. That marks the length of those two sides. After marking the length of those two sides, we now need to draw a vertical line to get the other two sides of the octagon. So moving in our set square there to pick up that point like so, we draw a vertical line against the set square. So as you can see there now, after getting these two points, I've drawn two vertical lines from those points there, straight up the page. Again, I use the, the set square for that, or the set square and the T square for that. But again, if you don't have a T square, if you line up the inside edge of the set square with that black line and then pick up that point, it will be possible to draw a vertical line. And when you're trying to get the line on the other side, if you turn your set square there like that, you can draw up a vertical line. So once we have the two lines drawn vertically as shown, we now need to mark the length of side on that. So again, using our compass, we take our compass and we put that on that point there like that, and we mark an arc on that line, move the compass over here, and then we mark that arc there. So now you can see we have we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five sides of the octagon and we now need to complete the top. So using our 45 degree set square again, the same set square that we use to draw these lines here at the bottom, I now bring in the top corner back in to complete the octagon. And I also do the same with the other side at an angle of 45 degrees, we bring in that side there. Now, the end of that should be very, very simple, that we just get our compass now, put the point of our compass on this, mark an arc up here, and from this point over here, mark an arc, and that gives us the last two sides, it gives us um, these two sides coming in. And then the last side of the octagon will be a line joining across the top there. Now, once you have this done, you heavy in the octagon. So using a heavy pencil, we go around the octagon, heavying in the sides to complete the shape. So just as a recap on that, what did we do? The first thing that we did is from the bottom base there that we were given, we bring a line up here at an angle of 45 degrees and another line off there at an angle of 45 degrees using our 45 degree set square. We then take the length of the side we were given on our compass and put in the point of the compass here, we swing an arc onto this line and with the point of the compass here, we swing an arc onto this line and that gives us these two sides. From this point here, we extend up a vertical line, we extend up a vertical line and again, we take the distance that we had on our compass and we mark an arc there and we mark an arc there. Then we bring in the sides at an angle of 45 degrees we take the distance there on our compass to swing two arcs and then connect the line across the top. And once we have all the points found, we heavy them in with a heavy line to define the octagon. That completes the drawing of drawing an octagon given the length of one side. Moving on to this question here, we are asked to construct a regular octagon in the circle shown below. The first thing to do is from the center of the circle, draw a vertical line from the center to the circumference. To do that, place your set square against a T square or a, uh, um, or a line, a horizontal line on the sheet. And then from the center of the circle, extend a vertical line to hit the circumference of the circle. Now, we have already said that these divisions up here are at an angle of 45 degrees. In order to get um, this angle up here, it's 360 degrees divided by eight, the number of sides, and that gives us 45 degrees. So if we now take our protractor and place the protractor that it is accurately on the center of the circle, so very, very accurately make sure that the crosshairs of the protractor are lined up with the center point of the circle. And the line here is, is lined up with that vertical line on zero degrees. 
we then measure around 10, 20, 30, 40, mark an angle of 45 degrees there exactly, and I mark a point at the end of that, and I draw that line back into the center of the circle to give me an angle of 45 degrees. Now, you could, if you wanted to, go around there eight times with your, with your um, protractor marking an angle of 45 degrees each time. But this is a regular octagon, and because we have an angle of 45 degrees here, this gives us a side of the octagon. So if I join a line from here to here, that gives me my first side of my octagon. Using your compass now, first of all, draw a heavy line between the two points that mark the length of the side for the octagon. Then using your compass, place the point of the compass on the top of that, on the top point of the circumference, and then open it up to take the full length of side that we have worked out by drawing a line from the two points or between the two points. Now, once you have the length of that side on your compass, you then move your compass onto this point here and we swing an arc onto the circumference of the circle. Move the compass to this point here and then swing another arc onto the circumference. So as I said, we take that distance on our compass and then beginning at that point, at the point of the compass there, I swing an arc onto the circumference, move it onto this one, swing another arc. Then on the other side, you start with the point of the compass there at the top of the circumference, swing an arc, swing an arc, and swing an arc all the way around. When it comes to the last point, don't use the compass to swing an arc to locate that point. It will give you a much more accurate drawing by just very simply using your set square to transfer that, <clears throat> that distance down to the bottom. Now, the reason that I, that I say that is, that's just from a point of view of accuracy. If you're even out a half a millimeter or a quarter of a millimeter when you're marking those distances, you can end up with a situation at the bottom where that point may not be exactly in line with that. So just from an accuracy point of view, it is fine to take that distance on your compass and swing an arc onto the circumference on this, on this side and then swing an arc all the way down here. But just to make sure that you get that point exactly in the middle, transfer the center line down onto the bottom and that will give you the point exactly where you want it. Now, if you look, we have eight points marked on the circle. So what we do now is using our pencil, we draw a heavy line between all those points. So once we have all the points located very, very accurately, and again, the lines must go from the points on the circumference to each other. These lines cannot be inside the circle. They must end up on the circle. So we draw a line from this point to this point to this point and down to the bottom. And then on the other side, exactly the same thing from point to point all the way to the bottom. And all of the lines must meet on the circumference of the circle. So that then completes that question of how to construct a regular octagon in a circle. First of all, draw a vertical line from the center to the circumference. Using your protractor, mark an angle of 45 degrees. Once you've marked the angle of 45 degrees, draw a line into the center. This gives you the length of the side. Take that side on your compass and step it down here, marking one, two, three arcs on this side. And again, on the other side, one, two, three arcs and then transfer the center of the octagon directly to the bottom to get the final point. Connect all the points together with heavy lines and that completes that question there. And finally, the last question. We are asked to construct a regular octagon in the square shown below. So on your sheet, you have a square indicated as, as shown 
The first thing that we do for this construction is that we have to connect the diagonals of the square together. So accurately line up your set square with this corner and draw a line to the top corner. Accurately line up your set square with that corner and draw a diagonal line up to here lightly. Now that gives us the intersecting diagonals. With the point of your compass in the bottom corner of the square, open up the compass until it reaches the point where the two diagonals meet. Once you have that on your compass, then using your compass, swing a quadrant of a circle. This is a construction, so it should be lightly shown on the page. So using the compass, draw the quadrant of a circle. Now, you do that from all corners. So moving around your compass then into this position, draw a quadrant of a circle, a quadrant of a circle, and another quadrant of a circle. So first of all, we drew the diagonals together. And that gave us the point in the middle of the square where the diagonals intersect. Put the point of our compass here and we open the compass up to get that point where the diagonals meet. And then I drew a quadrant of a circle. Then I put the point of my compass there in this corner and I've drawn another quadrant of a circle. Put the point of the compass on that corner and draw another quadrant. And then finally in the bottom corner, I draw another quadrant. And that produces this cross arrangement here. But if we look there, where those arcs hit the bottom of the square here, they give us the points on our octagon. So to, to draw the octagon there, we have a side going from here, up to here, from there, across, and around to all of those corners. And then that is how we construct an octagon in a square. A case of connecting the diagonals together to get the centre of the square and then putting the compass there on the corner, opening it up to the, to the centre and swinging quadrants of the circle will give us the points we're looking for. So where all the arcs intersect the perimeter of the square at that point and that point here and here gives you all the points on the octagon. And then using your pencil, draw a heavy line between all of those individual points to get the perimeter of the octagon. So that's how we construct an octagon in a square. First of all, connect the diagonals. Point to the compass here, open it up to, the, to where the diagonals intersect. That gives you the radius of the, the quadrants and then using your compass draw a quadrant from each corner and where those quadrants then those quadrant arcs intersect the perimeter of the square give you the points on your octagon that completes that drawing in relation to finishing the sheet and the title block i've noticed that some of you are writing onto these heavy lines now, if you look at the, the writing down here at the bottom, you can see that the printing is not on the bottom and it is not on the top. It is in the middle. Now, it is difficult to see on the sheets that you were handed out because they were photocopied. But if you look closely, you will see evidence of guidelines going across the, the boxes. So what I want you to do is I want you to heavy in the guidelines. If you can not see them, if you measure the distance from the top of this box down to the top of the letters here and from the bottom of the box to the bottom of the letters, whatever that distance is, measure that up and then draw guidelines across. And when you are printing, print inside the guidelines as indicated by the printing at the bottom of the page. This is important. So once you have the guidelines drawn across there very, very lightly, print in the name of the school, the topic that we're looking at, which in this case is the octagon, your name, the date, and the other information is filled in here. Again, keep your printing nice and neat. So looking back on what we've done, the first part of the question was calculating the angles. 
So again, to get a, the setup angle or the external angle that we use for setting up any polygon is first of all, we think of the number of degrees in a full circle, which is 360. Then you consider the number of sides that your polygon has. In this case, an octagon has eight sides. Divide 360 by eight gives you an angle of 45 degrees. And this gives us our outside angle here of um, 45 degrees. So A equals 45 degrees. When we consider a straight angle, so again, if we begin here at zero and go all the way around to this position here, it's 180 degrees. So a straight angle, which is an angle that is based on a straight line, contains 180 degrees. So when we go back here to looking at calculating angle B, we know that A is 45, we know that there are 180 degrees in a straight angle. So to calculate angle B, it's 180 minus 45 gives us an angle of 135. So the internal angle there of the octagon is 135 degrees. And then as we said, that if we were to draw a circle in the center of this octagon, that circle is made up of eight sectors. And we know that there are 360 degrees in a full circle. So to work out angle C, it's going to be again 360 divided by 8, which again equals 45. That completes that portion of the question, working out the angles mathematically. Then we moved on to this. We drew our line. We came off at an angle of 45 degrees. We took the length of that side there on our compass and we just worked around and again we just drew our vertical lines brought these lines back at an angle of 45 degrees and again because it's a regular octagon all sides are the same so using the compass to mark the arcs on each of those lines we found the points and connected them together to produce the octagon coming down into this one constructing the octagon in a circle first of all we drew a line from the center up to the circumference marked an angle of 45 degrees and drew a line out here. That gave us the length of one side. And then once you have the length of one side, take that on your compass, swing arcs onto the circumference. And then that gives you all the points of the octagon, connect them together with lines to produce the octagon. And then finally, the last one was constructing an octagon in a square. So we had our square. The first thing we do is we connect our diagonals put the point of the compass in this corner, open it up to the where the diagonals meet, and then draw four quadrants from each corner. And that gives you the, the eight points that you need to draw the octagon. So that completes that drawing in relation to um, the octagon. Working out angles, constructing an octagon off a side, constructing an octagon in a circle and constructing an octagon in a square. Again, when you're doing that, pay close attention to keeping the drawing incredibly neat. Any printing there that is on the sheet in relation to the title block and the, the mathematics indicated there in the first question should be put onto the drawing very, very neatly. When you're setting up the other parts of the question make sure that the lines that you use for construction are very light lines those lines should be practically invisible on the page now i've drawn them a little bit heavier so that you can see what's going on but you could tone those construction lines down a little bit more so that completes that drawing finish that yourself at home